Date is July 20th, 2012. This is SA Godin, case number 306, AN 15642. This will be a meeting with Israel Keys at the Anchorage FBI office. Present will be Frank Russo, myself, and Officer Jeff Bell. Time is 9.35. Hey, Israel. How are you doing? I ran a little late this morning. I sat there and watched the whole Vermont press conference that I'll uh, tell you about. But first, uh, we're going to do our usual advisement. All right. All right. Um, when we picked you up today, we didn't interrupt any meetings with attorneys or anything like that? No. Okay. I'm going to read your rights now. Um, you have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Yep. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that? Yep. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. Do you understand that? Yes. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before and during any question, if you wish. Do you understand that? Yes. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, I also understand that you have standby counsel um, appointed, Mr. Kirtner and Ms. Welsh. Would you like either one of those present today? No. Okay. You under the influence of any... Drugs or anything? No. Okay. I think we're good. Mm -hmm. All right, so I watched the Vermont press conference this morning. Um, so good news, I think. I mean, they uh, it went on for 40 minutes with them basically announcing that the Kurds were dead, the dump search was nothing. But the good news is they did not use your name in okay. any of it. They um, basically said there's a suspect in custody. That's the news report we printed out this morning on the press conference. I'll give you a second to read that. Yeah, so I think that was, you know, the good news. And let me tell you, I, I watched, it was the U.S. Attorney from Vermont and the State Attorney, who actually is running for elected office right now. Um, they were the main speakers. They had an FBI person up there, too, to talk about the dump. But, you know, went on for 40 minutes. And literally, I have to say, 30 of that, 30 of those minutes were them getting the crap kicked out of them by the press, with the no comments on things. I must have heard at least 50 no comments from primarily the U.S. Attorney, because they wanted to know, you know, all about this, why aren't you saying, if he's in custody, why don't you give us a name, it's, you know, all kinds of questions, you name it, and, and they got it from the press, and they just stood there and, and took it, and they did that um, in deference, I think, to what we're doing here today and what we started doing on, uh, on Wednesday. So I think that, um, you know, it, it was sort of amazing for me to watch that you know, based upon what we're doing in this room, we affected a press conference 4,500 miles away um, about what they were going to say. And, you know, they're clearly under intense pressure here. 
So, um, you know, I thought all that was good news. I thought, um, you know, they, they, you know, they're respecting our process here. The law enforcement is. And obviously the press, as we told you, you know, we can't control what they do. Um, I got off the phone with them this morning after the press conference to talk to the, the prosecutor and, and the, both federal and state. And they said, look, you know, the, the press has your name. And they're going to they're gonna run it in connection with this because of information they received. Remember I told you early on, well, you know, months ago when we were dealing with this, someone didn't know the gravity of it and linked your name on into it. And so they're confident that the press is going to attach you to this. So, you know, I think they got some questions after the press conference even throwing out your name and, you know, one of them knew that you'd stayed in a hotel like they had done their own investigation, the press, and knew that you'd stayed in that hotel that you stayed in. So, um, you know, just to be fair, I want to be straight up with you here. While everything that law enforcement did at the press conference was with our goals in mind, you know, it's like we've always told you. We can't prevent what some intrepid reporter is going to do, and, and they've told us like this. This reporter had, had this for a while, just waiting for this some sort of confirmation on it, and they're confident they'll, they'll run a story. I mean, I don't know how big it'll be. Um, you know, a dozen people were killed in, in Colorado uh, last night in, in a shooting uh, in a movie theater. Um, so Batman premiere, some Batman premiere yeah. Yeah. walked in and. Wow, they opened fire. Open fire, 12 people, and then there was like gas. Yes. Well, a lot of people were an yeah. infant, like a three-month-old, was, was shot there. So that's kind of ripping the country right now. Wow. Um, Did he get killed? The guy? Yeah. He yeah. got no, caught. He got caught in the parking lot yeah. trying to hide his gas mask and stuff. So yeah. apparently he wasn't plan it was Apparently wasn't planning on like yeah. suicide or anything. Yeah, it was Aurora, Colorado, which was uh, just outside of Denver, I think. Yeah, outside of Denver, the suburb of Denver. But the, you know, after the whole Columbine thing, it, you know, mm -hmm. obviously it reopens those wounds out there. So, uh, yeah. certainly not good news. But I, you know, I don't, I don't know. It, it, it made you know create a distraction here. So, see what you're saying. You think they're going to run a story yeah. before the end of the day? Yeah. With me? Yeah. <laughs> Well, Without confirmation, I mean, at the U.S. Attorney's Office, nobody's yeah. saying, con confirming anything, but it's it seems, a story they've it had It seems for like a while. they've been getting pressure from at least this, some media person who has had this information, and they've been able to hold this, this person off with the information because they got it early on in the investigation. And apparently, this, this media outlet doesn't see any need now to not say anything because they don't see any other any investigation going on that they would be disrupting. I think the chief's been able to say, you guys are going to screw it up in our investigation, you know, and so now they're like, you're not looking anymore. What what are we going to screw up? So, I, right. I mean, who knows? Yeah. And then I, what I talked to you about, that confirmation that reporters need, you know, that they, you know, they, they've been unable to get a separate source to confirm whatever their source told them early on. Right. So then they're basically like, well, you know, we, we, I think ethically they couldn't run it, and maybe it was a combination of both. But, you know, look, you know, uh, you know the jig is up on, on that, I guess, now. But, you know, I think we did everything we could, and we're still doing everything we can to kind of you know, move things forward here. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it was kind of inevitable. We told you that on Wednesday that that's what they thought, and they confirmed it this morning that that's going to happen. A little quicker than what we had anticipated on yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, we're hoping like at least have the weekend or something. But, you know. Well, we were hoping by the no comments that they kept doing at the press yeah. conference that they would get the hint that we're not going to we're not going to confirm anything that you're asking us, but. They don't think that this media seems to care. So, and, the and it could be a still an idle threat, but it doesn't. They don't think so. They think they're running. Yeah. They're pretty confident. They're so you're saying they still didn't give them confirmation? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they still no, they, did. they're not going to. But the idea that the investigation is over and someone is is uh, fairly confident, apparently. If someone is in custody in another jurisdiction, just that sort of merely saying that, I think gives the press enough to then run the story ethically. So just like we need corroboration to, to you know, convict you of, of a crime, right. they need corroboration to kind of print a story. And if they have one source, I think this is what the reporters have told me before, they have one source, they can't run it, pursuant to the journalistic ethics, but if they have some confirmation of that source, which can come, I guess, in a variety of different ways, they can run it. 
Right. So, but but right now they're you know they said nothing. I mean, I was kind of I brought this in here in the hopes to even show you the press conference. I don't think I can stream it on that, but uh, it, it was something to watch where they just kind of said no comment, no comment, no comment. Even the chief he went out there and said, look, believe me, you know we're not commenting for a reason, and you know that reason is in the, the interests of you know of everyone here. We're trying to work towards the greater good. So that's basically what he said, and I think that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, you know what, what we've been doing on this case and what we've been doing with you, right? All right. But you know, I guess yeah. You know, we, we we tried to control that early on, as you know, with that letter. But like we said, there was always sort of you know once that kind of opportunity passed us by, you know, we knew the day would come. But you know, kind of a, a bummer that it's here, but uh, not unexpected. <coughs> All right. On to other news. Um, the letter went by, the U.S. Attorney reviewed it, Capital Crimes reviewed it, um, so I have a copy for you to take All right. and read. So, it's, uh, I have the earlier one, but it's, it's substantially the same. I think they put in a lot more of, uh, you know, language to the effect of, you understand that some of these these are your goals, not ours. I mean, I think the perception is we want to avoid the perception that we're trying to lead you into the death penalty. That's your decision. Right. So I think some of that is in there. Take a minute. So this, the next step being, I don't have to sign this, it looks like, but you have to submit it to Vermont? Yeah, I mean, I think what Vermont wants to know is, you know, here's the deal. They're, the families of the couriers just found out about this. Right. So, you know, they're conscious of not giving them, you know, too much, you know, at once. And so they, and they definitely don't want to lead them on by going there and saying, all right, well, the guy actually, he's, he's going to accept responsibility for this, and, uh, you know, it's all going to be good, but the, it has to take place in Alaska, and they're afraid that you won't follow through on it then. Right. And then that would kind of traumatize the families. Um, so they asked that, look, show him the letter, make sure you get his agreement on the terms of the letter. Now, you know, obviously I told you, you know, I'm not your lawyer. I can't give you legal advice. I know you said you wanted some time to look at the letter right. and research it on your own. Right. So that's what I told them. So they didn't want to run to the family in case your research, 
you know, indicated that you didn't want to do it. So kind of reasonable. But you know, what I can tell you is the next step would be, you know, whatever your research reveals. I mean, like I said, I I want to move this forward quickly. I mean, let's say, assume you come back here, you know, next week and say, all right, I'm okay with this letter. You know, we'll get on a plane to Vermont the next day. Right. And I'll go out there and meet with the Vermont authorities and meet with the family members of the couriers and tell them that you're serious about this stuff. And you're serious about moving forward as long as, you know, they're not dragging you, you know, to Vermont and right. doing all those things. Um, and I think I can sell that them on that. I think, it, you know, um, especially if... You know, I, I think you know they do want to know some indication that you're, you're serious about it and have some sort of tangible, um, you know, some something tangible they can show the family or tell them about it. So that's what. So I hypothetically, think. how would this work? You type up another a plea agreement. Yeah. I give you the details in that plea agreement. I sign it. There's a court appearance, so the victims can mm -hmm. confront me. What I mean, no. would just give me the okay. rundown on Again, how you think it will go. You know, what I'm saying is, you know, not legal advice. It's just I understand that, but I, it's okay. helpful to me to sure. have it from another perspective. Believe me, I'm going to be getting other perspectives on yeah. it too. I, I, I would, would appreciate yours. Sure. Just um, shooting the breeze here. What would happen here is I could, you know, let's assume they, they sign off on it. Um, I prepare, you know, the more formal agreements, you know, that, that we're not asking you maybe to sign right away. You know, right. obviously you're doing your own research. It's up to you whether or not you get counsel on the courier case. Right. Um, but I, I'll get you those formal agreements that we typically sign with every, um, every defendant in this district. Right. Okay. What would happen here is um, a charge then would be filed and we'd have to figure out just logistically the best way to do it. Um, you know, it's possible it could be filed in Vermont, it's possible it could be filed here, even if it's filed in Vermont, it really doesn't matter because what they do is then transfer it here um, for disposition. So once the charge is filed, you'd get an appearance. And at that appearance, they do the normal thing that they did in, in your other case. Um, you know, you obviously have uh, you know an opportunity for counsel. Um, that's up to you. Um, after that, you know, I think we'd give you the agreements. If, you, know, you already had them, but I think you know we'd obviously want to give you a chance after you're charged to then sign the agreements. Um, once you sign the agreements, then you know we're off. Um, okay, so I'm formally charged in court. Yeah, formally Both charged in court, court hearing, and then given the opportunity afterwards to to do the plea. Okay. I think that, that that seems the most reasonable. I mean, there may be some steps, you know, in between to kind of show good faith, uh, depending on what they ask for out there. But right, um, you know, like I said, I think what I'm proposing here is reasonable. Let's assume, like, even the New York stuff, um, that they want that as a condition, you know, right. which is, uh, you know, not, not unreasonable of them. It would have to be, again, us going to. You know those jurisdictions first to avoid the situation that's been created in Vermont, and simply then we can kind of say, all right, we went to the jurisdictions involved in the New York body, we get their agreement beforehand, just like that agreement contemplates. Uh, we get that in writing, um, and then you go forward, give us the details on that, um, and that may conceivably happen before you know you go to court on the couriers. Okay. But that's that's all you know. It's still it's still pr protecting you, I think. I mean, from any kind of problem. Or I can just give you the location. Yeah, we can we can work on the details there. Um, yeah, that would be helpful. And then I mean, the rest of the information I could give you after. Yeah. You find out this is all going to work. Yeah. I mean, I think they're going to know. They're going to need a, a show of good faith to take to the family. In other words, tell the family, look, he's serious about this, and we know that because. Um, you know, with a view towards accomplishing this, he's given us the location of another body. Right. I think that. I just, I just want you to understand that I may not be willing to give all the details on that until I find out how this is going to. I'll, I'll give you some, you know, like you say, a show of good faith or whatever. If you, I think I can probably find, find that to stop the map, and you'll probably find something. But I just don't know if I'm willing to give the whole rundown on what happened on that trip um, until 
I find out uh, how this is going to work. Uh, sure. You know what I'm saying? I think, you know, look, we'll be reasonable with you. I think we can convince them to be reasonable. Um, you know, they're a little bit reluctant just given, you know, the, the other letter they sent. And I think I can tell them, look, you know, we can... We can even move this forward probably even quicker now. Um, if you're even prepared to give us the location now, I'll take it back to them and say he's already done it. So let's get moving on it. And I can be, you know, Joe Agent Godin and I can be on a plane to Vermont next week. Well, I mean, uh, that's fine. I mean, but pending, yeah, uh, having a chance to look this over and sure see how feasible it is. I don't know. I'm mostly concerned about timelines and stuff. So. But what is encouraging to me about you know the possibility of this is just having watched that press conference in Vermont where we were able to kind of get the state and federal jurisdictions not to confirm anything that they knew and get beaten up by the press simply because of their, you know, commitment to, to, to public service and the commitment to you know providing resolution to as many families as possible. I mean, that to me was very encouraging that, hey, you know, this really can work. And it can work in a way in which everybody hopefully gets, gets what they want. Well, my position on the whole media attention thing is you know that I don't want it. But that's, even though I have my own reasons for that, I'll also say that if we can keep it that way, it'll make everybody's job easier. Mm -hmm. Because I have all the details. We don't need the media. We don't need the public's help. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I know we. I think we're we're all on board with that. We, you know, if we had our druthers, you know, nothing would have happened in Vermont. We're not in it for the glory. We're in it to just right. provide. You know, we represent you know the United States of America, and we're trying as corny as that may seem. You know, we're in it to just try to provide the resolution for as many families across the country as possible. And then if uh, the book is closed on this without you know anything else being written, fine. I don't care. Right. The, me the media can make our job difficult too, so yeah. we completely agree well, with that. Well, that's an observation I've had over the last few months. Is that uh, yeah, things I, I had pretty serious concerns regarding the media and mm -hmm. attention that might be sought by a lot of different law enforcement agencies. But so I have to say, so far I've been impressed, and I don't think. Um, I think that uh, you've all certainly done your part in keeping it out of the media as much as possible. So, um, and we don't. I mean, we don't want it in the media. Then we know that's not in our best interest. Why? Well, I mean, right. We're looking at the bigger picture, and you know, I, and I know Vermont is too. Unfortunately, they can't, and we can't go to the media and tell them why it's important for them not to release this story because to them this is probably the biggest story they have you know so right. they don't know the big picture and we can't go to them and say hey if you release this it's going to mess this up because yeah i mean that, that would create even a bigger media frenzy if they release that information so right. i no i i'm 100 percent with you on that i i'm not too worried about them printing some story about me unsubstantiated they didn't even they don't have anything, so. I mean, as long as the media doesn't get all any of these details, I certainly am not leaking any of the details of any of the things I've done to anyone, not even anyone. I mean, like I say, I've said, you guys know more about me now than anyone, so as, as long as I don't see any of those details in the press, then I'm happy to keep giving you the details, but as soon as some of those details start to come out, then I know it came from somewhere, and that's not, you know, mm -hmm. not going to help matters in the future, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, in terms of Vermont, dealing with Vermont, obviously we have kind of a, a greater responsibility just by the fact that we're the federal government. We have to represent people, you know, all across the country. Vermont, you know, they represent the state of Vermont, and if, you know, that's their only victim here. They, you know, they have to be convinced otherwise, and uh, I think we can do that. I think we can manage that. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, getting things moving and, uh, and you know, reaching out to some of these jurisdictions, and I think... We just explained to you once, I think, about the, just the snowball effect of some of this stuff. Right. That once we start snowballing, um, I think no one's going to stand in our way. And in the context of that, you know, you, you get the resolution of, of the Courier case wrapped in with all the other cases. 
uh, that you don't get any kind of you know, uh, you know local prosecution of. So I think that's a, a huge benefit. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know everything, obviously, but I, uh, so far it sounds good to me. So mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully we can make it work. Yeah. Now, do you that that when you take that back with you, is that something that you get to keep? They won't. They should let me keep it. Will they? Will they look at that to read it? I hope they shouldn't read not. it now. No, they don't. They you just tell them it's lawyer it. stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They haven't been checking it closely lately. So. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> 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 um, with, with the paperwork, right? <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm always a mindset to kind of move things forward quickly. Like I said, you know, I'll drop everything and move with this thing. I, I would be fishing on the key and I had today if it wasn't for this. So. Oh, you still got some time. Man. <laughs> um, the traffic's going to be unbearable now. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly, man. I'm not going to get down there. I need that fish. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, obviously I want to give you time to look at that. Um, if you want, we can certainly, while you're looking at it, you know, with respect to the New York jurisdictions, just those jurisdictions, we can reach out to them and start doing that immediately if, um, you know, if you think it's appropriate. I, I think it would help things just because you're not giving away anything and it gives us time and the more time, you know, that we have to work from our end, the quicker things go. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it's within a few miles of that bank that I robbed in Pepper Lake. Like I say, I can probably find it on the map, but um, I'm not going to give the exact location until. Okay. No, I mean, the, uh, a little more time to look. Well, that, so that helps with that. Yeah, yeah that helps with that. That gives us jurisdiction. I mean, we can figure out jurisdiction. Jurisdiction where the, where the body might be. How about jurisdiction where. Is there another jurisdiction involved in any way? Yeah, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. Like I say, if we if we get through the court process and get the plea thing, whatever it is, the plea agreement signed or whatever, and you know, then I'll get the rest. Rest of the inf well, I mean, we we can do mm -hmm. all the rest of the information. Okay. I mean, at least to, you know, and just to tell you again, not to give you legal advice, but just how practically these things work is sometimes you know the, the jurisdictions that. Um, that can, that can charge you are jurisdiction where murder occurred, jurisdiction where a um, body was transported, and jurisdiction where a body was buried. So, you know, to protect you, it's not like we're asking these questions for, you know, our, our own advice, but to protect you from the prosecutions from outside jurisdictions, that's, those are the jurisdictions we're going to need. Right. Is those things. This way we can kind of get their agreement up front, and then... Um, you know, then we can go and, and get more details from you. Well, I mean, I'll give you the whole story. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I honestly, it was a few years ago, so I may not get the exact order of everything, but I'm sure you guys can put that mm -hmm. stuff together. Sure. But, I mean, when, when the time comes, I, I'm, it's not like I forgot what happened. <laughs> I can give you timelines and where things happened, and I mean, I'm sure some of that stuff you've probably already figured out by now, so. Yeah. Um, so let me just sort of, so we can uh, figure out schedule here. And we're going to try to reach out to the FBI. Mm -hmm. FBI in, in, uh, in D.C. will reach out mm -hmm. to that area around the Tupper Lake. I'm sure that's only one jurisdiction. Should be. That is the Northern District of New York there um, and, you know, basically advise them of it and then we'll figure out the local jurisdiction there. Now, I think we can tell the local jurisdiction, though, just so when we're having a conversation with them, hey, look, while there may be a body buried in your jurisdiction, there was no murder that occurred in that jurisdiction, correct? Well, does it matter? It matters for them, probably, um, because... Like I say, there's nobody else who knows about yeah, this, so... Yeah. If it makes it easier, I can tell it. 
You just tell me where you want the burger to take me. Place. <laughs> it happened. No, we want the we want the truth. So, um, yeah. I mean, honestly, you, you all you want is that I did it and how I did it. You don't really care where. Well, I mean, just to sort of protect you. That's what I'm saying. To get these agreements, we're going to have to know. I, I got you. I mean, look, I understand. Like, hey, you, take, you took them from one jurisdiction and brought them to another. Is that fair? Right. So, you know, you know where exactly they were when you committed the murder, I, I understand your perspective on that. I just, I, I don't really know. Well, let, me, let me rephrase my question. I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> you know, not, to, not to be too lawyer-like, but I'll rephrase it. <laughs> We can tell them that the place from the jurisdiction where this person is buried, that person was not taken from that jurisdiction. No. Okay. That, I think, can kind of give them a little bit more comfort about saying, hey, look, you're not really giving away anything. The person was taken from another jurisdiction. We don't know where yet, but uh, you know, he's going to tell us provided you sign off on that. Then the next step would be, what jurisdiction was this person taken from? And if there's a different jurisdiction where they were murdered, then, you know, tell us that. But... I don't know if that, those are all different or what. It depends on where you are. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I say, you tell me if that makes a difference, then. Yeah. 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 I mean, they go. It's going to, this one is for sure going to stay federal, I would think. So I, I don't, does it make a difference? Um, where the person actually it could. It, Just it, so they know what they're agreeing to. Well, and, and it could from the standpoint of we wouldn't, if we work all of this out and you give us, let's say, Hypothetically, you gave us a jurisdiction where they're taken from and a jurisdiction where the body was found and all of this gets resolved. What we don't want to have happen, and I don't think what you want to have happen, is a year from now the jurisdiction where, for whatever reason, the jurisdiction where they think a murder happened jumps into this and wants to start pulling you into things. So that's why having that kind of that three prong. As long as we have all the jurisdictions. We want, we want to cover those up front so you don't end up getting screwed in the end and we don't end up having any surprises in the end. Um, so we have we can get all the assurances up front. So that that's I think kind of why that yeah the three are important. Well, that's, but that's what I'm concerned about too. That's why I'm saying if there's certain things I should leave out of the story. If all you need is that yeah the person died and that's where they are, then that's all I'll give you. But I'm just I don't I don't know. I mean I we can do it either way. As, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care how much information you get, all I care about is what happens with that information mm -hmm. after I give it to you, so. Sure. So if there's certain things that I would be better off not saying, then that... No, I mean, I, yeah. don't, I think where the person is from, or was taken from, or was taken. taken from, where they were murdered and where they are. If those are three different places, then three different places. If there's one, then there's only one. If there's yeah. two, then... Depends on how much driving you did. I did a lot of driving on that trip. So. Yeah, I mean, well, here's, here's where I think... Um, just sort of thinking, putting my lawyer hat on... Um, Depends on how far the body was transported. Sometimes, like, you know, let's assume someone was taken in New Hampshire and driven across Vermont and then buried in New York. You know, it's possible we'd have to get, you know, we, we talked to, to, to Vermont too just to sort of not have them try to. I mean, Vermont's been pretty good anyway, but, you know, we can talk to them and just make sure that they're not going to pull any surprises. That's right. That's why I'm asking. If it, yeah. So, so it sounds like the short answer is it might matter. It might. It might. Let's assume you can't get from point A to point, you know, B without going through another state here, and they're going to be able to argue maybe at some point. Well, look, he must have taken them through here. There's no other route. There's no other interstate that goes by. So therefore, you know. Uh, somehow we have jurisdiction over this. I, look, I, that's kind of a remote possibility. I don't think anybody would do that. I'm just thinking carefully because that's what I'm trained to do. Um, uh, I'm, is there something we can put in the paperwork to that effect that whatever details I give about this are going to be strictly prosecuted in connection with this? 
Yeah. Not, that's that's exactly not additionally later on down the road. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we want to include those people in the initial letter, right? All right. To simply say, all right, look, I can then go back to Vermont in the hypothetical situation and say, look, uh, a body was driven through your state. Um, you know, the other two places are on board with not prosecuting him. Um, are you on board with not prosecuting? Because if you're not, then we're not going to ever find out about it. Since you didn't know that they were driven through your yeah. state, so you'd be on board with it. It's, it's, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's another phone call to make, but I think, you know, if you want that sort of... No, I don't. I'm not worried about it. I, like I say, I, uh, as long as everything works out. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it'll be fine. I mean, I, quite honestly, I haven't thought, you know, carefully about the, you know, sort of driving through a state with a body. I, you know, usually don't think that way. So, um, you know, I'll think about it some more. But uh, right, I'll do well, some research myself just to satisfy myself. Uh, that you know that wouldn't happen. And I know you don't know for sure. I don't know how long it's going to take you to review this or whatever your plans are with it. Do you have any idea when you would anticipate wanting us to come over and? Yeah, I mean at least uh, um, since we're not like on phone dial. <laughs> Whether um, I can't say for sure, I would think that by this evening I would. So so if we came like first part of next yeah, week, yeah, like Tuesday or Monday, Monday right. Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, the next week we could yeah. talk some more. Yeah, I think that I would think so. Uh, you know, uh, again, like I said, you want to move this forward. I, I want to move this forward. So I mean, if, if that's possible, great. I can then we can get things started from yeah. our end. And we can and possibly head out right away yeah, then next week too. I already looked into flights. It's only 14 hours to Vermont. It's not in That's 18. it. <laughs> we have a couple stopovers, and we, we can get out there. But uh, you know, uh, I've been talking to them on a daily basis about some of this stuff, and I'm going to communicate with them again. The fact that you've looked at the letter, um, it looks good to you. I think you said, and you're going to do some research on it on your end, and uh, we're going to talk next week. Sure, you don't want to take me with you, and I'll just do a cross country road trip. Well, you like to drive more than, uh, than fly, so we're going to be flying. Get this all knocked out. <laughs> I think Vermont would like, like us to bring you there, but uh, I'm not sure you want to go there once you step foot in that jurisdiction. You may not get back. Yeah, you're not coming back. I'm not worried about New York, but like you say, some of the other stuff, I don't know. It's, uh, if you can. You're going to want all the details. Things are going to get kind of fuzzy. Uh, there's not some of the stuff I'm not going to be able to find just by looking at a map. So that's a ways down the road. I'm not, like I said, I'm not for this. I'm not worried about it. But I don't know. Something maybe to start thinking about. I don't want to get held up because just because I can't find stuff or. You guys aren't able to find stuff that you want, and you know there's only so much I can do, obviously, from where I am. So, yeah, no, we realize I think that's on us. Um, you know, as long as you're making your best efforts to it, and right up until this point, I mean, I, I think everybody understands that the things that you've showed us, you spent a good deal of time looking for, and uh, you were pretty careful about it, and you've been pretty close. You know, and there's, I, and I know. In the future, just there's things we can do, the other things we can do that might make it more helpful than like Google. If we can get somebody on the site, right? Stream that's what video I was say. If you things like that, you might be able to help. Certain, certain areas you might yeah. have to um, have a dash cam or something yeah. so I can see landmarks because uh, I know all the general areas. I just mm -hmm. yep. all the areas we're talking about are really big places, so. Yeah, and I think that's doable. As we kind of get to each one, we can certainly try to do it again. All right. All right, so I guess then we, uh, we'll meet again early next week, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll go over that thing, and then if you have any other questions when we meet again, we'll try to answer those best I can. But in the meantime, I can, you know, start putting stuff together. FBI will start working on that New York stuff.
mm -hmm. at least to getting their uh, assurances, mm -hmm. and I think we can uh, we can move it forward. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Any other questions? It's a good time. Anything else you want to go over today? No. no we're good. Good. We'll get. Uh, I'll get some people. As to go in time is 10:30. Back on tape. Um, you know, all I can comment on is the way you're charged with now. Um, so he's like, well, I'm just wondering if I run a story like this, would I be out of line? And I said, look, you, nah, I can't tell you that. I don't know what you know, what your rules are. So that's basically what I what I told him. But we went back and uh, and did a quick internet search, see if anybody else is. Running it. <coughs> that's. The, 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 the station back in Vermont is probably the affiliate of... The NBC affiliate. Yeah. So they're probably already making phone calls up here. But this came off of the... Off of local, KTU, the out of So, so Ver Vermont has already called KTU, it appears. So this they put this out right after the press conference. Yeah, and I suspect it's exactly what we had said. They had the information, they had you connected to it, they were basically ready to just kind of make that assertion based upon the information they heard early on. But this, I think what we told you still holds true, this has nothing to do with anybody confirming anything at that press conference. This is what they put together early on. But we wanted to confront it with you because we didn't want you to think we we're, were lying to you about that. And had we not that got that call, we probably wouldn't have even searched that. But and we all we all decided that you should see it before you went back to to the jail there. about that. It's exactly what we expect. Uh, we're issuing no comments on our end. All right.